Good afternoon, everyone. It is January the 23rd, 2021. We are in the middle of most people's New Year's resolution. Um, my name is Dan Allen. I am your, one of your two hosts for our weekly Q&A on our business project, the uh, trading side of it. My other, the other host, my partner, Mr. Tito Avila, will be kind of leading the show. We are right at the top of the hour. We do this every week at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. Uh, Mr. Avila, the show is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Allen. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Another Saturday Q&A. We are here uh, on this lovely, cool winter, uh, winter morning out here. And uh, yeah, ready for some questions. Hopefully we got some answers for you. So feel free to unmute yourself and uh, fire away or uh, drop a question in, in the chat. So um, uh, my name is Marianne Holt. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So my question, I, I just, I finished week one um, and one of the assignments in week one was to choose a broker. And I'm a little, I, I feel somewhat intimidated in that way. I'm, how do I go about doing that, choosing a broker? Um, there's a lot of brokers out there. Uh, the same, uh, you know, as many as there are banks almost, right? So um, it's really just a question of uh, what, you know, what your own personal preferences are, Um if you're just getting started, it's very likely that you're going to be trading primarily just uh, Forex pairs, right? Okay. Uh, in other words, uh, primarily, you know, assets in the Forex market, right? So Euro, US dollar, et cetera. So with that being the case, um, I would recommend choosing a broker that is, uh, you know, federally regulated, right? so that you know everything is on the books and there's no funny business um and uh you know the i guess one of the the more competitive edges of brokers that people tend to look at before choosing one in particular um is spread right so spread is something um that is pretty important and it's basically simply the distance between the buy price and the sell price. And that's one of the things that brokers tend to advertise. So if you browse around a given broker's website enough, you will very likely eventually find an area where it advertises what the average spread size is on that broker uh, on a given pair or set of pairs. Uh, that's something that you can compare. And obviously you're gonna want the smallest spread possible so that when you enter your trade, you're as close to uh, the, the the price that you're going to want to enter at as possible. Uh, maybe Mr. Allen has some more input on that. So Mr. Vila just showed you one of the variables that's important to him, which is the spread, right? But there's other variables as well. And you'll learn that as you, what's important to you as a trader, as you kind of get your flow. The, if uh, Marion, who, who are you working with in the project? Who helped you get started? Um, Kim. Kim, great. So. Kim and I work together, so get Kim and get, get uh, you, Kim and I together right after this, right? Or text Kim to be my number, and I'll give you a recommendation for demo though. And so my thing, like, and I think uh, Mr. Vila's uh, analogy of they're like banks. I thought that was super decent for me. I look at them as casinos, but the, the the bank analogy is beautiful. The the the, the, the spot you're in now, you're going to go into a demo account, right? So there's going to be no live trading. There's no money at risk. So as you get a chance to see how a broker is, you'll then be able to do some of that deep diving that Tito was referring to. So you even kind of even know how much you care about the spread, whether you're a long-term trader or you get in and get out and the spread, I mean, different things to you on, under those different uh, conditions. So step one, what I would do is get with Kim. Kim's going to give you my number, text me, I'll give you what I think is a cool broker for demo. The reason okay. why we're not doing it here because we're recording it and everybody has different uh, parameters they're going to like. So the one I'm telling you is just that I know they have a broker, they have a demo account, and I know you can start trading tomorrow in demo 
and then you'll learn the other stuff as you ask questions and uh for those other different variables is that cool yes thank right. you yeah but the, 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 the important part for me is going in demo so none of it matters right now the what's what's most important at this stage is you get comfortability with mt4 um, and placing trades and then seeing what all that stuff means so then the importance of the broker kicks in after you have the skill set. Okay. Hey, good, good morning, real quick, Mr. Al. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Al. Good morning. Tito. <laughs> Tito, I'm sorry. Tito, I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, don't have a lot of time for the job. I want to ask a quick question. Uh, I was checking out uh, the U.S. dollar. Japanese. You got to speak up, Shahid. I was, I was checking out the U.S. The US dollar and the Japanese yen. Got it. Right. And when I was checking it out, they, they were saying it was, you know, on, a, you know, one, which was 1D, which is a, a daily, right? Yep. I assume. Yes. When they changed that 1D to like 5M or a, 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 a half an hour, does it, does it have an impact on you actually getting the opportunity to, 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 you know, make a greater amount or a lesser amount? It's just always been in my mind. I'm going to ask that question. That's a phenomenal question. I'm gonna let Tito jump in at first, but that was that was super decent. <clears throat> let me see if I understood the question. So you're asking if the time frame is lower, if there is potential to make uh, less money or more money? Yeah, pretty much. I, mean, I, I don't know how I go because I'm relatively a new trader. I'm, a, I'm mainly a builder, Tito. So okay. it, I'm just yeah. still trying to understand the, that aspect of it. If it's one D yeah. versus uh, three uh, three M, does yeah. that have an impact on? your chances of, of gaining or, you know, making less or, yeah, you, you pretty much hit it right on the head. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, um, that, that's a loaded question right there, man. Um, it's, it's good though, because, you know, for me, the most important aspect of time frames in terms of the value of them, in my personal opinion, is reinforcing um, how fundamental the top down analysis is. So, my answer to that question is um, there is no one time frame that is necessarily more valuable than another because it's all uh, you know, every 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 major time frame has its place. So what I mean by major is when you're talking about 1D, right, which is the daily uh, time frame, which is showing you per candle. Right. Because we as you can see on the screen here, we have. We have uh, these candlesticks. Each candle represents one day of price action, right? Um, that is giving me a limited amount of information because I can only see one candle for each day, but maybe I want to break that down. And so the whole point of the top-down analysis is as I work my way down to the four hour, I can see the price action in greater detail, right? So ultimately, um, the value of an individual time frame on its own, if I had to assign one to it, in my opinion, that would depend on what kind of trader I am. So if I'm, uh, you know, a, a day trader where I'm doing multiple trades uh, or even one trade within a, 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 a the same day, right, or just even within a few hours and closing out and exiting, um, I'm going to probably use the smaller time frames more in my top-down analysis than if I was, let's say, a swing trader, somebody that's trading more over the course of several days or even weeks, right, on a single trade. Uh, in in which case, I would probably be putting more emphasis on the higher time frames, such as, like you were saying, the daily uh, down to the one hour. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't necessarily say that depending on the time frame i'm going to make more or less money it's just a question of how much emphasis you're going to put on each one depending on your trading style i'm curious to hear uh, mr allen's perspective so shahi you got to look at you got to look at the chart as a bunch of information to make an intelligent decision right and so when i i know that you're not super uh techie but Think about a printer, okay? And how the printer is kind of putting out whatever information is coming from whatever the source is. They have these new things I need called a 3D printer. And the 3D printer is actually making the thing like a, 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 a gun or a candle and the 3D printer is actually making it, right? So what's happening on the chart is all the data that's, that, that 
it's happening and the whole market is showing up on the chart. So Tito, do me a favor. Um, so the US, the USD JPY, that ain't the important part, but I know that's what I got the question. So I'm gonna do it on BTC, the one we're on right now. No, go back to the one you're on because it's gonna move on the uh it's gonna move on Saturday. Right. So go to the minute chart, the one minute chart. This is how I explain it, Shahi, when I'm talking to people. So this chart is still moving because it's Saturday. So this particular it's called an instrument, okay? But for 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 laymen, this chart or this pair moves on Saturday and Sunday because it's Bitcoin. The other currency pairs, they go to sleep on Friday and they wake back up on Sunday after evening, okay? So right here, you'll, you'll still see on the minute chart that the candles are still forming. So this chart, which is a 1M, is 60 seconds of information per candle. That's what it means literally, right? Then if you go up to the 5M, instead of it being 60 seconds of information, it's five minutes of information in the one candle. And so you just keep going up or down the time frames to be able to uh, look at larger groups of information. So I got this. Uh, hold, on, hold on, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, who am I looking for? Um, Nona. Nona, you have, I'm about to make you co-host. Let people in for me so I can stop looking at that and I can talk. You're now the co-host. So, so now each chart is now per candle is gathering more information. And what Tito is giving across is based on your trading style, certain information is going to be more important to you than, than the rest. So from a top-down analysis perspective, we go to the daily. So go to the daily for me, Tito. Now each one candle is 24 hours of information. So in the last 24 hours, the, the market has been more bearish than bullish. Bearish means going down. Bullish means going up. Color-wise, red means going down. Green means going up, right? So now we know that yesterday, the market went down to that wick area, came back up. And then today, is now red going kind of back down. And if you look back across the last week, which is five, well, for this one, seven candles, you can start saying, okay, what has price been doing? Price is all the candles together, right? All of it together. We call that price action. And the short term, the short cool name for it is price. So if you thought about it like the printer, uh, Shahi, like I'm, like I'm talking about right here where it says BTC and it's like a red line at the bottom. Go right there for me, Tito, where it says that that's like the printer line. Go over here to the, to the, uh, to the right, right there. The red line is printing from the, the red candle. Yeah, that right there. That's the actual printer. And that same printer, if you look at the price, that price is going to be the same on all the charts, right? So that's what price is right now. Price is at uh, 39, 319, whatever that number is. So now right here, it looked like the market is kind of slanting down, right? If you can kind of make a trend line for me uh, at the top of the wicks for me today. So right from here, over the last couple of days, it looked like about two weeks, price from a daily perspective, price has been kind of heading down. So that gives us a thought, right? So now we're not doing a top-down analysis now. I'm just trying to give you, that's what this picture tells me. Go to the four hour for me, Tito. So we already know that it's going down, but now a little bit closer look along the last four, now, if you see that circle Tito drew, if you look at it on the daily, it only covers two candles. But the same exact circle covering the same exact time is now covering four-hour candles. So now you get to make a different type of decision or the same, but you have different information on the, on the last two days. Because the last two days, which is 48 hours, is now broken into four-hour candles. So you got more detailed information. Take me down to the one. And this is the power of the top-down analysis. Now, in that same exact circle, he hasn't done anything different. You get, you get a different picture of the same information. Now you know what it's been doing per hour. So this is kind of the magic of the top-down analysis because you get to look at the same information from different perspectives to be able to make a, um, a, an informed decision on whether the chart's going up or down. So that's my answer. So it's like a 3D printer. I, I appreciate that. I mean, the clarity is definitely uh, definitely clear. I appreciate that from both of you, gentlemen. 
Absolutely. Great, great question, big brother. All right, man. Very good question. All right, who we got next? Uh, questions? Feel free to unmute yourself. Good morning, Tito. This is Toy. How are you? I have morning, a question. Toy. How you doing? Um, I'm going to my notes. Uh, okay. Toy, I've been watching your demo trading too, Toy. I've been watching your demo trading. I was talking about you last night. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> Thank you. It's been fun too, by the way. It's been fun learning. Um, okay. When, when we talk about the support and the resistance, like those two lines that you have there, is this where, um, let me, let me go back to it. So where the downward trend is happening, how would a person know if, if it's me coming in to know when to come in without, without like if you're learning without the, trignal, the signal trades and you setting up with where the market is starting, how would I know to come in? What would, what would be signs that I look for? Um, okay, so in other words, your, your question is, if you're trading on your own without using signals, what is your confirmation that it's time to enter the trade? Yes. So there, there are many different strategies, probably like an infinite amount of strategies uh, in the world of trading. So the first thing that you need to establish is what is your strategy? Well, here, our default strategy is 20 pips and dip because that's what our uh, Epic platform uh, teaches us based on um, Coach Max's curriculum, right? Uh, we also have the advantage that we have access to the 20 pips and dip indicator, uh, which is the sort of, um, let's say the uh, visual uh, sort of um, training wheels for that specific strategy. So depending on your strategy, in this case, 20 pips and dip, you're gonna to wanna to follow the guidelines of that strategy in the process of making your decision to enter the trade, okay? So um, to, to, to try to summarize this the best I can, because this is, this can, this is a deep question. Um, with, when it comes to 20 pips and dip, the backbone of this particular strategy is the 50 exponential moving average line, which is this blue line that you see here. So when you're doing um, your, your, your top-down analysis, right, which is always first and foremost, you're gonna start on at least the daily and work your way down, right? Identifying points of support and resistance, looking at what the candles are doing, remembering what you learned from your candlestick trading Bible, mm -hmm. coming down to the four hour as well as to the one hour, doing all that work on the, on the, on the top-down analysis, at some point, and on this particular strategy, specifically on the one hour, you're going to look for price to break over the, 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 the 50 EMA, right, this line. And once that you get a confirmation, right, and this is also based on other confluences, right? So confluence mm -hmm. is an important word. I highly recommend writing that word down and getting very familiar with it because okay. a confluence is basically... A, let's say a, a confirmation it's it's a, it's it's data that is pointing you in a certain direction when you get multiple pieces of data that are pointing pointing you in the same direction all of that is confirming the same likely outcome let's say okay so mm -hmm. just to give you a quick example of that if you have a trend line that's going down right that's showing price going down mm -hmm. and at the same time you have a candlestick price action uh that is that is showing you that there is it's likely to continue going down uh then th those are two confluences pointing in, at the same direction okay so mm -hmm. in that particular case let's say that i'm seeing the trend going down uh um and it, I, i'm seeing that there may be opportunity to enter a sell trade well before i enter that sell trade a rule mm -hmm. of thumb when it comes to 20 pips and dip is at the very least i'm going to wait for uh, the, the price, the candlesticks to break underneath the 50 EMA, right? So in other words, I'm going to wait for it to break underneath and close, right? I'm going to wait for the, the, the one hour candlestick to close underneath, okay? And then the one afterwards, I'm going to wait for that confirmation that it's staying underneath, right? Because as you can see here, a lot of times it'll bounce 
up and down, back and forth. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you get a confirmation that it's underneath, the, your top-down analysis continues, and you can come down to the 15-minute, continue your analysis here, right? I'm seeing that it's still underneath, down mm -hmm. to the five-minute, right? And in this mm -hmm. case, I'm seeing that it's not clearly underneath, okay? So your 50 EMA is, is crucial in this, and I highly recommend um, uh, going into the Epic University platform and, and rehashing uh, a lot of this stuff specifically about 20 pips and dip. Um, okay. as, as much as you can listen to Coach Max talk about this, the better, since she is really the originator and the master of it. Um, but ultimately, the idea here is that you want to familiarize yourself with your specific strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. Fundamentals, or well, fundamentals is actually technically it means something else in this arena, but uh, the basics in general, when it comes to trading is you always wanna look at points of support and resistance when you're doing your top-down analysis, mm -hmm. right? So like rule of thumb, you never wanna take, uh, 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 let's say a trade right when it's at support or resistance without mm -hmm. a confirmation that mm -hmm. it's breaking it, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that that kind of thing. So uh, again, it's, it's kind of a loaded question, but if you can get very, clear about what the, uh, the, the, the primary, um, let's say, point of confluence for your strategy is. In this case, it's primarily the 50 EMA. And then you're going to also look at what's surrounding that, what's going on around it, points of su uh, support and resistance, doing your top-down analysis. Just to All of it is just to do one thing, and it's to confirm a likely future. It's to confirm a probable future. That's all we're doing is we're trying to figure out what is going to happen. So if you can take all of this data, look at what price is doing from the top down and analyze the market structure and, and follow your rules based on your strategy, you have a much greater chance of successfully identifying a probable future and making a profitable trade. So that's the best way I can put it. Uh, Mr. Allen, Go ahead and offer your so, input. First, I want to say, Toy, uh -huh. my name's Dan and I'm your friend, okay? Okay. Okay. As I heard you ask the question, at the same exact time, I heard my grandson saying, Pop Pop, what's six times seven? And he's supposed to be working on his multiplication. And my answer with him would be, you tell me what's six times seven. Mm -hmm. Right? It's 42, but you should know that. So, and if you don't know that, I'm going to mm -hmm. go back and do the go back and do your homework, right? So it, it's a it's a great question, but right. So mm -hmm. this this learning process with this description is like a martial arts in my mind, right? The lower mm -hmm. belt being the white belt, you don't know nothing. You just here, yellow belt, you know some green belt and black belt, right? Mm -hmm. it sounds like a black belt question, which makes me want to go have makes you test your yellow belt and your green belt. Now I've seen you doing demos, so I know who I'm talking to. That's why mm -hmm. I'm, doing I'm doing it. So the yellow belt, the first thing to do here is to mm -hmm. get yourself onto the live trade session, whichever one is going to be yours. Okay. Right? And then some of that information is going to be talked about from different people's perspective. Tito gave you the baseline, which is the 25th and dip indicator method, which is mm -hmm. the book max, right? Mm -hmm. So from there, what I would do and this is answer your question really for me specifically. Okay. Is I would go to the live trade session archive when you have time, and I will mm -hmm. find every time Coach Max talks. Okay. Which is what Tito went to anyway. So God just was already prepping to tell you what Tito told you, right? So yes. I would have heard talk about it, then I would come back in. I when I right now uh, December the ninth is the one that I kind of got when I'm going. So I would just look for Coach Max. And she and I would get a real intimate relationship on how she sees the market. Okay. That will help you use the 20 pivot dip indicator better from what Tito's talking about. It helps you mm -hmm. kind of gauge in what pairs to even look at for which time frames. If you have mm -hmm. enough times that she's talking. And then from there, you'll find other people as well. So, but, but yellow belt is, because that's a black belt question. I'm going to go in the market with no help at all and I'm going to go get it. So I got it. But mm -hmm. start off with, trading getting getting into a trading session and mm -hmm. find out which people get a rhythm being proficient there okay 
right? Because you want you're looking to get 20 pips and dips from a black belt level. And based on your question, I don't think you've done it from a green belt level yet, if that makes sense. Let, mm -hmm. me, let me tell you the belts. Yellow, white, white belt. You just got on this call. You're not even asking a question. So that's your way past that, right? Mm -hmm. Yellow belt. You're getting on a live trade session and you're taking a demo trade with the coach, right? So mm -hmm. then it can be buy, sell, win or lose. You're in the mix. Like that's what the first person question of the day was, which demo, hold on, sorry, let me cut this so you can see me. Which, um, which, which, uh, which broker to pick, right? That's a great white belt question. Get ready for yellow belt, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, great question. So yellow belt, I'm on a live trade session and I got the one that fits for me. You're, you're, you're in uh, Chicago. So you might pick the morning one or the, 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 uh, the, the, the 6 p.m. on your time, but you mm -hmm. might not pick the one early in the morning, right? So you start, finish, you start going through that process. Get real good there first, if you will, okay. right? So, so that way mm -hmm. you got some people's opinion on which way to trade. So that way you got somebody that's down 30 trading, US 30 all crazy, got Veronica jumping in like, let's go get it, right? Or then mm -hmm. you got somebody else trading another way. So that to get there, then when you go to your green belt, now what we're going to do is take the live trade set, the live trade signals, right, from the mm -hmm. telegram. And we're going to then put coaches, Coach Max's 20 pip and dip uh, style on that indicator, on that, on that signal, right? Mm -hmm. So that way you're driving to go do a massage and sort of pictures, right? Mm -hmm. And you're on your way to a, to, 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 a, to a client and you get an alert and you pull over and you take five minutes to put a top-down analysis on that signal and you go okay i'm going to I'm, I'm prepared to take the trade but i'm also prepared to sit on my hands and you learn how to put alerts on your trading on your trading view okay then when you do both of those two for a while mm -hmm. then you'll say i got my own style i know how i feel like trading i know what pairs feel the best for me I, and then you go into that part you're talking about and you and you wouldn't have that question the way you have it today does that make okay. sense uh-huh yes so Every is a great place to get to, but don't run to your black belt. Yeah, you know I mean, get get your get your yellow belt. Like, like, let's get on a Zoom and like, oh no, she said this or he said that, and so we all got a a, a coach. Mine still is Max. That when they start talking, uh, Phil, if he if he's on here, I know he does a lot of the um the GEP stuff, but he likes other coaches as well, and you you kind of get that feel. So give yourself permission to go through the, the white belt, yellow belt, green belt, black belt process. Okay, so even though, so I was asking the question because I was reading the um, the Bible candlestick right. and just watching the lines there. So even with studying in that, um, still still go there to watch to watch Coach Matt. Thousand percent, because okay. with, the, yeah. with the 20, with, with the, with the uh, candlestick Bible is going to do is mm -hmm. properly prepare you for the five minute chart. Got you. Right? And mm -hmm. then so half of what Max is saying is gonna mirror the book as well. And as you, so now you start talking about the four types of knowledges, right? So mm -hmm. the first type of knowledge, which is the lowest vibration coming in first is called learned knowledge. It's taking information into your senses, reading, okay. listening, any way you wanna do it. That's the first mm -hmm. type of knowledge. Mm -hmm. The second type of knowledge, a little bit deeper, it's called activity knowledge, which is why the demo trading is so important. Mm -hmm. Because you're now applying what you're reading or listening to. It helps you get a muscle memory. Then the yes. third type of knowledge, a higher vibration, is called modeling knowledge, which is what we're pointing you to by saying, mm -hmm. go to the live trade sessions and pick who you like. We're saying Coach Max is a default, and then you'll mm -hmm. get your other stuff from there. So that'll put okay. you into modeling knowledge and activity knowledge, which is also... Um, double compound your learned knowledge from reading the book. Then okay. the fourth one, which is where Tito and I, we hang at, is that teaching knowledge, which is articulating all the other three. Okay. So by you going to the live trade session, we're mm -hmm. actually pointing you to Molly knowledge. But we saying go to the demo, we're pointing you to activity knowledge. And the fact that you are already where you are, you're solid on learned knowledge and you're just going to keep getting better and better from there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so and if and if that was harsh, I don't think it was. But if it was, no. my name's Dan, and I'm your friend. 
<laughs> Thank you. Red, red. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. Very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. T I'll turn it over to you. Roger that. Yeah. So um yeah, that's that that's a very it's I think that who doesn't have that question, right? Coming into here. When do I enter the trade? Um so important, but but uh so loaded. There's no one aspect of what we're learning here that's more important than the next in my opinion your candlestick trading bible is equally as important as understanding market structure as uh, understanding trends as understanding how to maximize your top-down analysis and uh getting information from as many different sources as possible um you know and, and starting with coach max and everybody throughout all the way down to our own organization and our own team here on our Q and A, all of it is valuable. So, um, you know, don't don't. Uh, this market will humble you if you try to cut corners. It will highlight that, and it will teach you about that. There's no such thing <laughs> as cutting corners in this place. So, uh, good question though. No shortcut, the shortcut. Oh man, definitely. So we have uh, some questions here in the chat. I'm gonna read them out real quick. So uh, first one here from Joe, what's the least amount of confirmations one should have before entering in a trade? And can the currency strength meter be used as a confirmation as well? <clears throat> um, so the least amount of confirmations or as, as we call them confluences that I've heard, and I'm, I'm just gonna quote Coach Max specifically on this is, you'll want to have before entering a trade at least five confluences, right? That's the number I've heard her use. That works for her on this 20 pips and dip. I think that that's a good minimum. Uh, and what I've done <clears throat> over the course of developing my own ability, specifically in the realm of uh, Forex and just day trading, general broker trading, is part of my strategy um, is I, when I'm writing down my trading rules, which everybody should have rules that they set in place that they always follow <clears throat> whenever you're trading. When I'm writing down my trading rules, I write down all of the possible confluences that I can identify. So you have like a bank of all the different things that you can spot in the market to say, oh, look, that's a confluence, right? So just to give you a quick example, uh, candlesticks, okay? Uh, Another example, um, support and resistance and resistance points. Okay, those are two confluences. Okay, you can easily get up to probably around ten confluences. Um, a bare minimum of five. I think that that's a good bare minimum, and it's also a good exercise in making sure that you're really looking at. Uh, the market from a well-rounded perspective at all different angles. Each confluence is going to show you something a little bit different. Um, so that's my personal opinion. Uh, Mr. Allen, you have something to add? Yeah. Ramos, look at that sell on Bitcoin real quick. <laughs> so that candlestick is bouncing off of what to the right, to the left of it, uh, resistance and red dots. Right. And then it was making first it looked like a uh, graveyard doji. Then it started turning into, but you got that little wick. I think it's going at least to the 50. <laughs> but no, it's, I mean, I'm going to give you mine, but that's it's irrelevant because we all got one. So uh, back to the live trade sessions, you know, start off with Coach Max, my friend, and, and, and kind of get it from there. So uh, my personal one, I don't want to influence you at all on what you need to be doing, but we may be trading different type of ways. Like I'm on the, uh -oh. take me down to the minute chart, Tito. Let me see what we look like on a minute chart. Not as sexy, but it don't look bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's that's back to the live trading session. So as you as you go for your yellow belt and you start going on and seeing other people, look for somebody that's getting the results or the, the trading style that you kind of like, Joe, because my answer is going to be conducive to my trading style. So if you don't have my trading style, my answer is not going to help you. So, but it could, it could uh, tempt you. And then without the other stuff to add to it, it could make you a little wacky, right? Five may make you too cautious. Two may make you too aggressive. So you got to kind of go with what's my style. And 
if anybody knows Dan Allen, I am a very I get two pips, I can go, I can go do a little dance. You know what I mean? Because I can make the rest of it work for me. Somebody else might need 40 pips, even though Coach Max said get 20. So uh, that's a great question. But for you, I would tell you to start looking at the different traders that are, are in the back office. Get yourself some chart time, like 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 video time as well, right? And then from there, you'll have an answer because somebody that speaks to your spirit or say it, and you'll go, I agree with them because I like the way they, they trade. Right. Damo telling me he got 500 pips doesn't impress me at all because it's not my trading style, right? And now I got to go, do I, do I want to adopt Damo's trading style or do I still want to hold on to mine? And then now I have that question. Now I've watched different stuff that Damo may do, but negative 500 pips and it's a cool day for him, I think he need to talk to his mother more, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when he gets the good ones, so it's so at, at some point, this thing becomes very personalized. And our job here is to help you filter through the information so it's not confusing, so you can get to the places where you can personalize it for you. That's right. <clears throat> now do me a favor, Tito, real fast. We've been talking, I've been talking for about three minutes, right? Take me three candles back and measure those measure those because I would have got out of that at that red, the red dot right there. That that then became support to me. So measure from uh not that yeah, give me the last three candles. Not the one we're in right now, but the three from there. So measure to the to the current one, because that thing's going up. No, not that one. I got out because it because my the, the one before that, it kind of hit the red dot. You see what I'm saying? I got you. So measure the one the one before the current one and two prior. How many pips is that? Down to right here. So right here, that's about 17. Nah. So the three candles that I was taking a sell. So go back three candles, now four. The one, the one, the one to the right of that say sell. Right. Go to the top of that one. Okay. And measure down the three to the width. Got it. Yeah, this this that's about 95. That's about where I would have been at. Because on the five, you see mm -hmm. that you now go back to the five for me. On the five, it was this candle before I saw it wicking, and I said, well, we're on BTC, so I know it's going to be a big number. When I saw it wick and it's kind of jumping off of this resistance, the red dots to the left, I saw I thought it was going to go down for a second. Now, I would have jumped in for those three minutes, but that might not be some, somebody else. I can't tell you to do that. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to tell Rambles I saw it. Rambles, I saw a quick down sale, and I would have jumped in jumped out. That's quick. <laughs> Ninja. And I'd have got 20 on them though. I wouldn't even got 95. They had to give me a dub. We went home. Because <laughs> if yeah, you look, y'all, if you look at the candle I'm talking about, the say red, the red one, right? When I say sell with the wick, if you look two candles over, all three of them are stopped at the same spot. If you look all the way to the right where the other one is gold, it stopped around at the same spot. And then I had the dots. So when I saw that wick, I said it's going, it's going to give me something. Now, if you trying to trade for a long period of time, though, you would have jumped in on the sale. And when this next candle developed, you'd be crying. Because now you're, in the, you're losing. And that's what I, what I love about trading. You can be winning and or losing depending on what moment of time you're in. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got a, a follow-up question from Joe here uh, in the chat as well. It says, can you explain the break and retest method uh, as a point of entry? Absolutely. <laughs> Coach Ryan on the live trade sessions, Joe, don't skip it. Uh, we'll be cheating. So the same way I show, the same way I show Toy how to find Coach Max. Whenever you see Coach Max, you'll kind of see Coach Ryan. Coach Ryan is the flagship owner of the uh, retest uh, is the three R's. What's the three R's, Tito? Uh, uh, rejection, retest, retest, rejection, react. Yeah. So that, that's that's our best our best thing for you today, Joe, is to show to show you to go look up Coach Coach Ryan, and then let him kind of break it down because he make love to it. And you know <laughs> <what> I mean, <laughs> that's right. No, yeah, it's it's and it's and it's honestly it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. He he explains it. Try the seven and a half again, honey. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, no, so it's, it, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You'll want to get the details from Coach Ryan, and, and he's been on quite a bit lately, which is nice. I, I like to follow his sessions, but it's very simple. It's very straightforward. You saw here how, uh, you saw how price, price broke down past the 50 EMA. Uh, it retested here, right? This is a, a, a green candle, which means it retested. It rejected it, and the idea is that as it comes down, you react. You enter a trade, you get all this, you get out. I'll, I'll leave it in those simple terms for now. And if you want to dig deeper, definitely follow Coach Ryan uh, to, to uh, get the uh, sensei's take on the three R's. Retest, the reject, react. Thanks, Kim. Hold up. <laughs> Kim threw it up there. That's how you know you're on a, when them live trading sessions. They'd be right, right fresh in the brain. And and Tito, look at that, that, that trade you just took. Uh, right to the right as you got in on that, on that uh, react. The green mm -hmm. dots, which are support, would have been helping you get a good idea to the other ones, the ones that were already formed to the left. Oh, down here, yeah. Yeah. So when you mm -hmm. saw it kind of come down and then go back up, that's, right. that's a good idea because it's hitting a support. That's right. <clears throat> but you need the 20 pivot dip indicator to kind of have that those support resistance already laid out for you, which right. were the dots are. The dots the red dots are resistance on that chart. And then the uh, green dots are support on that chart without you having to draw lines. That's right. Uh, so we got some, uh, let me just check the chat real quick here. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, somebody had asked, can you write the confluences in the chat, please? Um, <laughs> so that <laughs> that's something that you're going to want to accrue over time with your own understanding of what the confluences are and then identify what the best ones are for you i mentioned a few of them um, in terms of candlesticks right points of support and resistance uh trend lines okay uh your 50 ema that's a confluence continuation and reversal patterns that's a confluence right i mean i think that's already five right and you can go on and on and obviously if you're using other indicators those indicators can include another confluence or multiple within each one of those <clears throat> volume so um, i'm sorry yeah go ahead go ahead no uh, up here which i don't want to uh, up here uh coach ryan put it out one time coach ryan and max and i printed it out and i'm just going to read it because we go we got it recorded um what are the different types of confluences one ema two support resistance three price action candles back to toy reading the book four trend lines Turn line breaks, five, time of day, time of week correlation, six, index correlations. Then it says seven is other indicators or strategies that you may have, et cetera. So that was from Coach Ryan and Coach Max, literally. And that was more than five. Yeah. But the same ones you said. So I was the, that's why I wasn't going to read it, but I, I mean, everything we're telling y'all, we really do, right? And then that's why we can tell it to you. Because we get to go from modeling knowledge, activity knowledge, and learn knowledge, and then just apply it to what's now called teaching knowledge. We're just telling y'all what we know to be true from our experiences. And that's why I'm trying to point y'all back to modeling knowledge, because you get us on topics briefly for an hour. But if you go to back to that live trade session, get what you're paying for, um, the, the on-demand version of it, um, you know, my, my Netflix game is legendary. Uh, I don't really watch live TV anymore. If I'm going to spend two hours on TV, I'm going to watch exactly what I want to watch during those times I have available. So my on-demand game has become amazing, which Netflix is the total, is just an on-demand a platform. But so is the, the back office. It's just an on-demand platform. So live trade sessions because you want to jump in with the coach. But other than that, what I call it is downloading somebody's brain. 100%. 100%. <clears throat> we got it. We got our work cut out for us. Some of it's done for us, actually. Um, okay. Uh, so we're at 40, almost 44 past the hour. Um, we got time. I would say let's, let's go for one more good question here. So whoever's got a question, go ahead and. Uh, Not a bad question. Good question. Not a bad question. Good question. <laughs> yeah. Let's go for no like, like solid. <laughs> Yeah. Make, yeah, you make me put on my thinking cap. Let's do that real quick. 
<laughs> coming in. Here we go. Bring it, bring it in. Let's 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 wrap this up in a good way. Nikki, what you got going on, Nikki? You ain't asked nothing all day. Look, I got in late today, so that's why I was like, let me let them ask the questions. Like, cause something you all probably already discussed, but I um was doing something else. One of my friends' moms got COVID, so I was sending out prayer requests for everybody to start praying for a mom. So nonetheless. Um, I ended up catching on late. I was trying to catch what you were saying because I needed to be on this class, actually. I was like, oh my God, they're talking about it. Um, <laughs> the drop down analysis um, far as implementing the one minute, and I'm sure you all have discussed that, bit, but I chimed in later on, how you go back to a, light, um, a lower time frame. I unfortunately did not get the max um, package. I only got the one that go down five minutes. Um, to see how the lower time frame helps you out. Cause I like to trade personally. I like to trade on the hour. I don't know, that's just more comfortable for me. Um, I don't like to do that five, five minutes and stuff. Like I ain't no sniper. <laughs> so that seems to not work for me. That doesn't seem like the low, slower pace trade for me. I'm comfortable with the one Go ahead, hour. Mr. Allen. Yeah, well, the, I think the one minute comes on a free version as well. Uh, just okay. double check that. Yeah, it was and telling me to upgrade. For the one minute? That's interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to shut up. I don't know what I mean, because I don't have a free version anymore. So I I'm pretty sure, yeah. Uh, worst worst case, uh, if, if you're trying to click on it and it's saying that you have to upgrade just by clicking on it, try just mm -hmm. typing when you're on your chart, you can on your keyboard just, just uh, hit the number one. Like, okay. And then hit enter. Okay, I'll see, see if, if it takes way. you there. It should. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Like, that they guys can't get the one minute. <laughs> you should be able to get. Yeah, it. I, I, I want to say that when I was in the, in the they could have changed it because it's 2021 and yeah, I know it's wacky. But um, the other thing is, um, for you two, go to Coach Max and watch her top down analysis because entering on a five minute isn't because you're taking a. You're, you're trying to get in and out of the market very fast. Maybe the one minute could be for that. But if you watch the top-down analysis, the five minutes just help you get a clearer picture of getting a sniper entry on that one-hour thought process that you're talking about. So I think, okay. yeah, yeah, I, I would I would recommend from a yellow belt perspective, uh, get some Coach Max in your system. Um, yeah, yeah, I love her. I love her. And I also, uh, I mean, I like them all. They are unique and they all teach you it just like you all got where guys were saying that it's what your preference is, you know? So um, Elise is really, really good. Oh my God. Because like, <laughs> I'm a technical type person. So I have not even went live. Could I have made money? Absolutely. I am technical. I want to know everything I'm doing let me before ask you question, I get Nick, in the market. Nick, let me ask you, let's, let's reverse the left. You and I talked and you had looked at other platforms before you got here. And that was part of our first conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And you're not here for a bunch of the fluff. If you get here, you wanted the information to be solid. Uh, other people have took your money and just strung you along. And I was, I was the, uh, I was representing Epic, the new boyfriend, trying to say I'm not like the old other guys. <laughs> Um, I know I like y'all already <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> so, so just from an information perspective, you want like I, I hear you getting to it, but I wanted to ask it specifically because we're recording. Um, how has this information been for you as a person wanting to understand trading seriously? This is everything, guys. Like, oh my God, this is everything. When I start trading, my people that are like kind of iffy, because I've been talking about trading for years, I'm going to pay for them <laughs> myself out of my money. So you know I'm not playing that awesome. this is that serious. So when I told you this was this information was going to be solid, I didn't lie to you. At all. Okay. Period. Good stuff. You didn't give them enough praise, actually. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, thank you for helping us in out the call. We're going to turn it over to Mr. Rambus um, to share any thoughts he has. Get, if I can get myself unmuted. Good morning, family. How's everybody doing? I think this was another phenomenal session.
guys, uh, again, I just appreciate what you bring to the table, Mr. Allen and Mr. Avila. You guys are awesome. And I thank you guys for really having some dialogue today. This is probably one of the most uh, interactive, engaged uh, Saturday Q&As we've had. So keep coming with the questions. Make sure you promote this out to your groups, right? Make sure they're connected uh, to the source of the power, right? You cannot get the refrigerator cold if it's not plugged in. So if you have people who aren't plugged in, they're not going to get the power. Um, Today, noon, noon time, 10 minutes from now, yours truly will be hosting our Zoom opportunity call. So those who aren't just trading, but also building the residual side, make sure you promote to your guests at 12 o'clock, five o'clock, nine o'clock tonight, uh, three actual live presentations. I'll be conducting the first one here at noon in about 10 minutes. So load it up with guests. That's uh, the Zoom ID is 777-434-6287. Again, that's at noon, 5 and 9 p.m. Eastern time, 777-424. I'm sorry, 777-434-6287. Okay, plug uh, all your guests in for those and get your three so you can get free. And at one o'clock, of course, we have the Success Lab, our corporate staff, Mr. Jonathan Green, Spencer Iverson, Mark Sterling, every single Saturday host a Builders Academy uh, on Saturday to help you guys build out your epic business. That's on opportunity.epictrading.com at 1 p.m. Eastern. So plug your teams in, get connected to where you can and when you can, and we'll see you guys on the beaches and at the bank. Phenomenal call again. Guys, I'll turn it back over to you. Tito's all yours, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ramis and Mr. Allen, and everybody for bringing your questions. Uh, if you have more questions that we weren't able to get around to, uh, please go ahead and drop them in the GEP chat. If you're not in there yet, uh, get in contact with your sponsor. Let them know that you want to get in there and uh, we'll make it happen. Other than that, everybody have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you again next Saturday. Take care.